In this video, we're going to go over a topic you might see on an ACT exam, asymptotes. We're going to talk about vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So what is a vertical asymptote? A vertical asymptote is a vertical line that guides the graph of a function, but it's not part of the function. It can never be crossed by a graph because it occurs at an x value that is not in the domain of the function. A function can have multiple vertical asymptotes. If we look at this function here, f of x is equal to x plus 5 over x minus 4. Now we get a vertical asymptote when our denominator is 0. Okay, if our denominator is 0, it's not be part of our graph. So to find the vertical asymptote, you just set the denominator equal to 0. So 4 minus x equals 0. And you want to solve for x. So here I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So x is equal to 4. So here we'll have a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. If you look at the graph here. At x equals 4. I have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so both these red lines are going to approach this line, get closer and closer to it, but never cross it. Likewise, on the upper side here, it's going to get closer and closer to that blue line and never cross it. And this blue line is not part of the graph. Now, if we look at this function, we have f of x is equal to x plus 5 over x squared minus x minus 12. Here you want to factor the denominator so you can see where the zeros are. If I factor the denominator, I get x minus 4 and x plus 3. I can set each of these equal to 0, so it will tell me at what values of x will the denominator equal 0. So we have x minus 4 equal to 0, x plus 3 equal to 0. I'm going to add 4 to both sides here. x equals 4. Subtract 3 from both sides here. x equals negative 3. So we'll have vertical asymptotes at x equals 4 and x equals negative 3. So we can see at x equals negative 3, we're going to have this vertical asymptote. Okay. So from this side, it gets close to the line, but never crosses. This side gets close to the line, but never crosses. And we have our other vertical asymptote at x equals 4. Okay, so that's going to be a vertical line there. From this side, it's going to get close to that line, but never cross it. And this side is going to get close to that line and never cross it. So again, you want to factor your denominator. Uh, set up equal to zero and figure out what values of x will cause the denominator to be zero. So your graph can also have holes in them. If you look at this function here, we have f of x equals x plus 5 or x squared plus x minus 20. Now if I factor this, I get x minus 4 times x plus 5 in the denominator. Now notice I have an x plus 5 on top and bottom. Those would cancel out, leaving you with 1 over x minus 4. Now look at the denominator there, x minus 4, so that equal to 0. We want to have vertical asymptote at x equals 4. Now at, uh, let me look at the x plus 5. X equals negative 5. So at x equals negative 5, you're not going to have a vertical asymptote, but you're going to have a hole there. So it's going to be undefined. Because if x is negative 5, I'll have a 0 here, and it'll be a 0 in my denominator. Alright, if I look at the graph, we can see you know vertical asymptote at x equals 4. And on the normal graph, you will see at x equals negative 5. You know, it'll be an open circle to show that as a whole. But here on this graph, you can't see it. But if you were to click on x equals negative 5, it'll be undefined at that point. So if you can cancel out something on top and bottom, that will create a hole in the, the graph. 
Now let's take a look at horizontal asymptotes. A horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line that guides the graph of a function for its x values, but it's not part of the graph of the function. The graph may cross a horizontal asymptote but for large enough or small enough values of x approaching plus or minus infinity, the graph will get closer and closer to the asymptote without touching it. If the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same, in this case we have two, so we get degree two on top and bottom, your horizontal asymptote would be the ratio of those coefficients. So we have four over one. So our horizontal asymptote would be y equals four or one or just four. Remember horizontal is you know left right versus vertical up and down. If we look at the graph, we can see it gets closer and closer to this y equals four line. And it may cross it on certain cases, but here's gonna get closer and closer but here's gonna get closer and closer to the y equals four. So we look at this function, f of x equal to x plus five, or x squared plus two x plus four. Look at that graph, and we see our degree of our numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, one versus two, okay? As x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity, the denominator is going to be a lot larger than the numerator. So this can be approaching y equals zero. So in this example, the horizontal asymptote will be at y equals zero. So that's going to be right on the x-axis. So you see the graph is going to approach that. You get closer and closer as it this gets, you know, the x gets bigger, you know, towards positive infinity or uh, smaller towards negative infinity. Now it does cross it here. See it cross the horizontal asymptote, but on the far end towards negative infinity, it's going to be getting closer and closer to that y equals zero line, but won't cross it at the end there. So look at this function. We have f of x is equal to x squared plus five over two x plus four. So the degree of our numerator is two degree of the denominator is one. Okay, so our degree of our numerator is higher. So for horizontal asymptotes will be none, but we have what was called a slant asymptote. This occurs when your degree of your numerator is one higher, exactly one higher than your denominator. Okay, look at the graph. You can see here, so there's no horizontal asymptote, but we do have an asymptote that looks like this, that blue line, the slant asymptote. And we can find the equation of that slant asymptote by doing polynomial division. We're gonna have two x plus four on the outside, and then x squared, and since there's no x term, we're gonna put in zero x plus five. All right, so I'm gonna figure out what times two x gives me x squared. So that's gonna be one half x. One half x times two x is one x squared. And one half x times four is two x. Then from there, I'm gonna subtract. x squared minus x squared is zero. Zero minus two x is negative two x. Then I'm gonna bring down the plus five. Then I figure out 2x times what gives me negative 2x. That's going to be negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Again, I need to subtract. That means 0 here. 5 minus a negative 4 is plus 9. So that's my remainder, plus 9 over 2x plus 4. Then look at this first part here, 1 half x minus 1. That's going to be the equation of our slant asymptote. So y equals 1 half x minus 1. All right, so again, if your degree of numerator is 1 higher than your denominator, you won't have any horizontal asymptotes, but you have a slant asymptote. And you do polynomial division to figure out the equation of that slant asymptote. 
So here's an example ACT question. Consider the graph of the equation y equals 4x minus 5 over 3x minus 6 in a standard xy coordinate plane. Which of the following equations represents the vertical asymptote of the graph? So we can see there's going to be vertical asymptote in between these two. And to find the equation of it, just set your denominator equal to 0. 3x minus 6 equals 0. Add 6 to both sides. 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 2. And that's going to be the equation of our vertical asymptote. So answer A. Another example ACT question. Consider the equation y equals 4x squared minus 12 over x squared minus 3x. Which answer choice lists all the vertical asymptotes? So again, to find the vertical asymptotes at your denominator equal to 0. And then from there, solve for x. So here they have an x in common, so I factor out the x. It gives me x minus 3. So I'm going to take this x, set that equal to 0. Take the x minus 3, set that equal to 0. Solve for x, add 3 to both sides. X equals 3. So our vertical asymptotes will be at x equals 0 and x equals 3. So that's going to be answer choice B. Another example ACT question. The graph below shows the function of f of x equals 3x minus 7 over 5x plus 2 in the standard xy coordinate plane. Which of the following is the equation of the horizontal asymptote? Okay, so horizontal asymptote when our degree of our numerator is the same as the degree as our denominator, it's going to be the ratio of the coefficients. So y equals 3 fifths. And you can see here somewhere around here is going to be our horizontal asymptote. Okay, so somewhere less than 1 and in between 0. In this case, it's going to be 3 fifths. Now be careful here, don't pick x equals 3 fifths. It's going to be a horizontal asymptote, so it needs to be y equal to 3 fifths. So another example ACT question. The equation y equals 2x squared minus 16 over x squared minus 2x has two vertical asymptotes and one horizontal asymptote. What is a horizontal asymptote? So again, our degrees on the numerator and denominator are the same. So it's just going to be the ratio of the coefficients 2 over 1. So y equals 2 over 1 or just 2. So just answer E, y equals 2. So in this example, ACT question, it says the equation y equals x plus 4 over x squared minus 9 is graphed in the standard xy coordinate plane below. No point on the graph has which of the following x coordinates. So we look here, you know, what's not part of our domain uh, when the denominator is equal to 0. So we set that equal to 0, x squared minus 9 equals 0. Add 9 to both sides, x squared equals 9. To get the x by itself, you got to take the square root of both sides, you get x equal plus or minus 3. Okay, we only have one of those threes, the answer choice, so minus three. Okay, so don't be tempted by, you know, this, this will have a horizontal asymptote because the denominator has a higher degree, so at y equals zero. But the only x value that won't be part of the domain will be the one that causes a division by zero. So in this case, negative three. In this example, ACT question, it says, at what point in the standard xy coordinate plane do the asymptotes of the function y equals 2x times quantity x plus 4 over x minus 5 graph below intersect? Okay, if we look here, you know, in the denominator we have x minus 5, so 5 will cause a division by 0, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. Okay, so that's going to be somewhere here.
Now if I multiply out the numerator, that's going to be 2x squared plus 8x. If we look here, the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator, so we have no horizontal asymptotes. So it is one higher the degree, so we will have a slant asymptote. So again, we have our polynomial division. And we're going to get 2x squared multiplied to x by 2x. It was 2x squared, and 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. When I subtract, that's going to be 0, 8 minus negative 10 gives us positive 18x. Now I get to 18x, I need to multiply the top here. 18, 18 times x, this is the 18x. And 18 times negative 5 is negative 90. I subtract, it gives me 0 here, and 0 minus negative 90 gives us positive 90. Okay, nothing else to bring down, so that's our remainder. That's 90 over x minus 5. So this first part is our equation of our slant asymptote, 2x plus 18. y equals 2x plus 18. So we're going to go through 18, so it's going to be something like this okay so those are going to intersect at that point we know the vertical line is at x equals 5 so our x is equal to 5 i'm going to plug that into my y equation here so y is equal to 2 times 5 plus 18 and that's going to be 10 plus 18 or 28. So that's going to be at the point 5 comma 28. So to summarize, vertical asymptotes occur when your function you know, is undefined. So when you divide by 0. So you want to set your denominator equal to 0 and find out the x values that cause that to be 0. And those will be your vertical asymptotes. For horizontal asymptotes, if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, the horizontal asymptote would be at y equals a over b, which are the coefficients of your terms in the numerator versus your denominator. If the degree of the denominator is higher than the numerator, the horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 0. This is when your denominator has a higher degree. Now, if the degree of the numerator is higher than the denominator, there'll be no horizontal asymptote, but you will have a slant asymptote if it's exactly one higher. So I hope this video helped you understand what vertical asymptotes are and what horizontal asymptotes are. Thanks for watching.